I know what you're all thinking. The iPhone 16 isn't even out yet, and he's already making a video on the iPhone 17. And yes, that is true. I wasn't even expecting to make this video this early, but all major sources have reported that the iPhone 17 will be the biggest change since the iPhone 10. And based on everything that I've seen, I do have to agree. With the biggest change being a new slim model replacing the iPhone 17 Plus. This has been reported by well-known industry analyst Jeff Poo, and at first glance, it does sound like a very strange decision. Like, okay, I get why Apple would drop the iPhone 17 Plus, as both the 14 Plus and the 15 Plus were not very popular at all, with most people just going for the Pro Max model instead. But why would they replace it with a thinner version? That's just weird. Right? Well, it's only weird if it's a direct replacement. Based on everything that I'm going to be talking about in this video, you'll see that this slim model is actually the iPhone X all over again. The super premium high-end iPhone that sits on top of all the other models and comes with some groundbreaking features. The main being this much slimmer design. Up until the iPhone 6, Apple kept making their iPhones thinner and thinner every single year. But since then, they've been making them thicker each year, as they changed their focus to improving their durability and giving them bigger batteries. And personally, I don't mind that. The battery life has seen some significant improvements over the years, with the 15 Pro Max being the longest lasting iPhone that I've ever used, and also the only one that was able to last me through a full day of travel. And while I do love these battery life improvements that we got over the years, part of me still misses the era of ultra-thin Apple devices. So when Apple launched a new iPad Pro that was 20% thinner than the previous generation, I was hoping that maybe, just maybe, Apple was making a return to their era of making every single one of their new devices thinner than the last. And not long after, Mark Gurman published this article in which he detailed how Apple has indeed started working on a new class of devices that will be the thinnest and also the lightest in their categories, with the first being the iPad Pro. Future devices will include the Apple Watch, the MacBook Pro, which desperately needs to be getting thinner, and yes, it also includes the iPhone, with the iPhone 17 Slim being the first. Now, we don't yet know how thin this new iPhone will be. I would be surprised if it actually ends up being as thin as the new iPad Pros at 5.1 millimeters thin. Although, based on what Mark Gurman has stated, it will be, quote unquote, significantly skinnier. In our concept, we did make it 5 millimeters thin, just to give you guys an idea of how it will look like at this incredible thickness. Oh, and the chassis is also said to be made out of aluminium instead of titanium, so it will be even lighter than it is now. Of course, this also raises the question, will the battery life get a major downgrade given this thinner design? Well, that does depend. The new iPads are still rated the same as the previous models, despite being far thinner. And based on battery drain tests, the M4 models last even longer than the previous ones, by a whopping 4 hours and 20 minutes. And based on my usage, I can also confirm that the M4 iPad Pro lasted me for multiple days of use, something that I was just never able to do on any of the previous models. Plus, if Apple ends up using silicon carbon batteries, which is a new battery technology that allows batteries to be significantly thinner, they could easily achieve a much slimmer form factor, with the same battery capacity than what we have now. After all, Honor, the first manufacturer to use silicon carbon batteries, has already released the incredibly thin Honor Magic V2, which is just 4.7 millimeters when unfolded. And you know what else is pretty incredible to have? Our sponsor. Meet NordPass, the popular password manager made by the NordVPN team. Recently, I visited their HQ in Lithuania, and not only did I meet the team, but I also saw how they work and discussed why passkeys are the future of passwords. We need something better, and that solution is passkeys. And it's just like a set of two keys. One is a private one, one is a public. The private one lives on your device, like on your phone, or on your computer. It never leaves your device and the public one um, lives on the website servers. A hacker has um, yeah, no benefits from, from stealing those public keys because they need the private one to actually do some harm. So that's why you're quite safe and protected if you use passkeys. 
So pass keys are not just more secure than passwords, but also more convenient as you don't need to remember a password, you simply use your biometrics as one. Download NordPass today and start using passkeys on all of your devices. And if you use code ZOT at nordpass.com slash ZOT, you also get three months for free on NordPass's business plan, or the best possible offer on their personal plan. Now, remember when I said that the iPhone 17 Slim will be the iPhone 10 approach all over again? This wasn't just because of the 17 Slim being this premium model that sits on top of all the other models, but also because just like the iPhone 10, it is also set to come with a smaller display at 6.55 inches, as opposed to the massive 6.9 inch panel that we're going to have in the iPhone 17 Pro Max. And I think that the only reason why Apple's doing this is because they wanna trick us into paying even more for a larger model the following year, which is exactly what I've done with the iPhone 10. They priced it at $1,000, $200 more than the iPhone 8 Plus. And even though the display was technically bigger on paper, the aspect ratio was narrower. So when I switched from the 8 Plus to the iPhone 10, it felt like I was getting a smaller display that was also less enjoyable to type on due to the more compacted keyboard. And I remember at that time being like, oh man, I wish Apple had a larger iPhone 10 model. Well, fast forward a year later, and they launched the iPhone XS Max, which they sold for $1,100 or $300 more than the iPhone 8 Plus. This is exactly what I believe Apple will be doing with this iPhone 17 Slim or 17 Ultra, whatever they end up calling it. They'll release this smaller 6.55 inch model next year, probably at $100 to $200 more than the iPhone 15 Pro Max. So expect $1,300 to $1,400, and then the following year, they'll release the bigger variant at $100 more. And then a few years from now, the other iPhone models will also get a price bump. Once again, repeating the iPhone 10 moment that eventually led to the entire smartphone industry bringing their prices up. Now, in order to justify this price increase, they just cannot make it only thinner, right? They need to do more than that. And of course, we do have some other notable upgrades here too. For example, the Face ID camera is rumored to now be placed under the display something that we've been hearing for many years now, with only the front camera remaining visible and likely the same size as the Dynamic Island is right now in height, in order to make it easy for developers to keep that same Dynamic Island functionality as we have now. This front camera is also set to be upgraded to a brand new 24 megapixel sensor with a six element lens from the current 12 megapixel with a five element lens that we've got on the 15s. Also, this year, we're getting that new 48 megapixel ultrawide. And then next year, we're set to be getting a new 48 megapixel telephoto too. Which means that if this iPhone 17 Slim is getting a 24 megapixel front camera too, then all the photos will be taken at a default resolution of 24 megapixels, no matter which lens you use, giving you a much sharper image. So that's the front. Now, the back is also getting some big changes. As we all know, ever since the iPhone 11 Pros, the camera module design hasn't really changed at all. It only got bigger. The standard iPhone 16s are getting a new camera design this year, but the 16 Pros are not. So this high-end iPhone 17 model is said to finally be changing that by possibly having the camera in the top center. Essentially the same approach that Google has taken with their Pixel phones, which does make a lot of sense. Think about it. Apple is making this iPhone 17 model significantly thinner. Unless they give it a potato camera, the camera bump would stick out even more. And it is already 4mm thick on the 8.25mm iPhone 15 Pro Max. If Apple were to decrease the thickness of the iPhone to 5.25mm, then the camera module would increase by at least 3, to a total of 7, possibly even more, uh, with that new larger main sensor that's been rumored. The iPhone already wobbles significantly when it's sitting flat on a table. This new version will just swap it like crazy. Unless, of course, they put a camera modules in the middle. Then they can immediately solve this issue while also giving the iPhone a brand new look too. Additionally, we're expecting some even more upgrades. We could see up to 12 gigabytes of RAM from the current eight. Uh, Jeff Boo states eight only for the slim model and then 12 for the pro models. Although I would expect the slim or ultra to have, you know, at least 12 as it is going to be more expensive than the pros. As for any other new features, there's also had to be a new anti-reflective coating for the display. Possibly something similar to what Samsung has done with the S24 Ultra, which was great as it significantly reduced the reflections without giving us that grainy texture that we got uh, on the nano texture display of the iPad Pro, for example. And this glass is also to be more durable, 
Although it isn't quite clear yet if this will just be on the iPhone 17 Slim slash Ultra or on the other Pro models as well. We're also getting Wi-Fi 7 with up to 40 gigabit per second speeds, four times higher than Wi-Fi 6C and literally the same speeds as Thunderbolt. Obviously in practice, these will be far lower, but still fairly impressive tech. And I do believe that Wi-Fi 7, by the way, will be coming to the other iPhone 17 models, at least the Pro models, um, as Wi-Fi is integrated into the main chip itself. And of course, given that this is an entirely new generation of iPhones, we are likely going to see some fresh new colors too. The ones that we designed are gold, silver, tungsten, and sapphire, with sapphire looking especially gorgeous. Oh, and if you love the wallpaper that we've got in our concept, it is part of our new candy canvas pack for our app wallpapers, made by our designer, Michael Swengel. And speaking of wallpapers, due to popular demand, we've now launched an actual store on our website where you can purchase individual packs. And if you guys love this, we'll bring this feature into our app as well. The store refreshes each Wednesday with a different selection of six packs. This week, we've got Vibrant Views, Spectrum Splash, Poetic Pigments, Minimal Mammals, Mesmerizing Mountains, as well as Striking Stadiums. A beautiful pack of 10 of the most popular football stadiums in the world, which, to celebrate the ongoing 2024 Euros, we are selling at a 50% discount. You can check out our Wallpaper store and our Wallpapers app by using the links below. All in all, I do believe that one of the main reasons for this iPhone 17 Slim or Ultra even existing is Apple wanting to recreate that iPhone 10 pricing moment in order to boost their slowing iPhone sales, where they released a super expensive high-end model of the iPhone, but in a smaller form factor, only for this to be followed by an even more expensive larger model the following year, which is then followed by all the other iPhone models adopting this higher price point. And according to this poll from 9to5Mac, a lot of people would actually be fine paying this much for an iPhone. But let me know, what do you guys think? And definitely subscribe if you have enjoyed this video. I'm Daniel, this means Enough Tech, and I'll see you guys in the next one. It's Enough Tech, signing out. Cheers.